In this video, we'll be taking a look at AWS's CloudFormation. CloudFormation is similar to Azure's Cloud Init in that it allows us to write configurations as code. And essentially for CloudFormation, we can write JSON or YAML files that will specify the configurations of our AWS services. So for example, think of the last video where we created a EC2 instance. Well, this EC2 instance required a key pair as well as a security group. And we had to create all of those beforehand. Using CloudFormation, we can group all these different services together to bring up an EC2 instance right away. And that's useful for one, if you want to share it with someone, or also if you wanted to set up the same resources in different regions. As you can see right here, I'm using the bash terminal. In Windows 10, you have the ability to run Linux as a subsystem. And using Bash, it's a lot easier to connect to our EC2 instances because we don't need to use PuTTY. And now we'll go ahead and create our file. We'll be using JSON for this example. The first thing you're going to want to do is specify the resources. And here we'll be using a EC2 instance. We need to specify the type as AWS EC2 instance. And then we need to give it properties. We're going to specify the image ID. This image ID is for the Linux 2 AMI that is free tier legible. And then we need to specify the instance type, which is going to be T2 micro, because again, that's the only one that's legible for free tier. Now we'll go ahead and create the security group. And again, we need to specify the type. In this case, it's going to be EC2 security group. We need to give it a Description should be group description. And then we also need to specify the rules, otherwise known as ingress. And so the protocol we're going to use is going to be TCP IP. We're going to allow connections on port 22 because that's the port used by SSH, which is what we're going to use to connect to our instance. And then the CIDR is the list of IP addresses that are allowed to connect to our instance. By putting all zeros, we're saying that all computers are allowed to try to connect to our instance. We need to link the security group to our EC2 instance. And so under properties, we will create a ref. And this ref has to match the name right here. Now we're going to 
specify the key pair that we're going to pass in when we go to create our stack. And so under parameters, we'll call it key example. And again, we'll give it a short description. And then we need the type. It should be capital. AWS. EC2 key pair key name and like the security group we're going to have to specify a reference to it and this reference should be key example like so. All right. So now if we go back to the bash terminal, we can validate whether our, we have any mistakes in our template by running the validate template command. And we are going to pass it our template file. And if it doesn't show you an error here, it means we're all good to go. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to create the key pair. And to do that, I am going to move the template file out of the Windows file system. So now we're in the Linux one. And the reason for that is when you go to connect to your instance, if your private key is to open in terms of file permissions, SSH won't actually let you connect to the instance. And so it's a lot easier to do it in the Linux file system. So to create our key pair, we're going to run AWS EC2 create key pair. The key name we're going to use is going to match the one in our file, which is key example. We need to use query key material. We're going to output it at text into a file called key example now if you run AWS EC2 describe key pairs, you can see our public key right here, which is what we're going to use when we go to create our stack. But before then, we'll make sure that we change our PEM file so that it's only readable by us. And you can do that by running chmod 400 key example.pem. Now if you run that again, you can see we're the only ones who can read it. So to create a stack, we're going to run AWS Cloud Formation, create stack. We're going to give it the name of example stack. We're going to pass it our template. And then we're going to pass it the there should be a space there. All right, so now we have our stack ID. I will copy this just in case we need it. I don't think we do. So that's going to take quite a while to create. We can check the status by running AWS cloud formation describe stacks. And looking at the state which is rollback in progress, which means something went wrong. 
and we can check what went wrong by running AWS cloud formation describe stack events and then the name of our stack which is stack name example stack and so it failed to create the must be of type list of string so i'm going to figure this out and then i'll be back so when i created the security group i didn't specify that it was a list so you can actually have multiple security groups associated with a single EC2 instance. And so rather than being a object, this should be a list. Now, if we run this, you can see that it's rollback complete. Rollback complete means it failed, but it managed to deallocate the resources that it was creating. So we can delete the stack. Like so. Now if I run that again, it should be empty. Good. All right. So let's try creating the stack again. Is not well formed. All right, we will check this again. It's because this should. be an object. All right, let's try that again. There we go. All right. So we created a new stack. Now if I run AWS Cloud Formation, describe stacks, it is creating it right now. Again, that might take a little while. If we run AWS EC2 describe instances, we have quite a few here. Let's check their state. So this one is pending, so this is the one being created. I'm assuming yeah, this one's terminated. That might have been the one from before or from me practicing practicing this okay create complete if we take a look at the state again it should be running yeah all right cool so now we're going to take the ip address and we're going to connect to it using ssh we're going to pass it our private key and then the default user for Linux AMIs is EC2 user and then the public IP. Yes, we want to connect. And then if I do a PWD, you can see we're in the directory of the EC2 user. I can navigate to root ls. And then I, once I'm done, I can exit like so. So there you have it. That's how you use cloud formation using the AWS CLI. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments.